Hello again, it's Martha Beck, Martha Beck, <laughs> here with Katie. the amazing <laughs> Byron Katie, talking about this incredible new book, A Mind at Home with Itself, which I was lucky enough to read in manuscript before it was printed, and I can tell you, it, it put me in a space that I'd never been in before. I walked around in a state of complete bliss while I was going through this book for the first time, and every time I go back to it, it takes me in deeper. It's a, it's a gorgeous work of oh, art, Katie. Thank you. So we're doing little um, summaries of the different chapters, and in particular, the quotations at the end of each chapter, and this is chapter four. And the quotation here is really fascinating. It's the kind of thing that you say, some of the things you say are as simple as dirt, like, um, you know, basically you do three things. You sit, you stand, you walk, you lie horizontally. Yeah. And then you say things that make me go, like, rewind. And this is one of those. And I love these. When Katie says something like this, it's because she lives in a space beyond suffering where my mind hasn't been. And when I, can, when I hear it, it's not nonsense. It's super sense of a kind. And then if I can find my way into it, it always sets me free a little bit more, a little bit more. So I'm, I'm hoping to get you to do that for all of us here. So listen to this, you guys. She says, I have devoted myself to the end of suffering in this apparent mm. world. But I don't do it because I believe that anyone is actually suffering. I do it because I'm serving myself. Now that's got three mind-blowing... First thing is, apparent world? What do you mean? Well, apparent world is is this past future world that that we are thinking out of experiencing life out of for example if i tell you um if i say wasn't lunch really wonderful today martha then what am i talking out of i am talking out of the images in my head mm of the past where I could see there was salad, I can see the salad dressing, there was salmon, I can see that in my mind's eye. And that's what I'm saying. Wasn't lunch wonderful? Well, what lunch? Right. You know, and did you all see the salmon and the salad as you were hearing it? So yeah. that's imagination that mm -hmm. wasn't lunch. Yeah. And real lunch would be, you know, like I'm oh, I'm 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 eating something right here right now. And and we could say that's real. Yeah. And but even what I'm eating right here right now I wouldn't know what it is if I were not perceiving a past upon what I'm eating. So I don't really see the food. I see what I'm imagining out of the past, this food to be. The past is my reference. So this food really is the apparent food. It's in your imagination. And it's imagination. And so there really is no self. Yeah. Other than the imagined self. But that doesn't make it real. The imagined <laughs> lunch. But that doesn't make it real. So to notice things like this, I, I, I hope that this becomes so simple, you know, for people through this book. You know, that's why it was written, to, to take the pain out of life to take the suffering out of yeah. life so 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 you know there's no separation among us you know it, it can be the end of war when i talk to you i'm not talking to who i imagine you to be mm. i'm talking with you so now i can hear you without perceiving onto you the meaning of what you say or who and what you are i'm seeing the real you i'm yeah. connected so that's that's the first part of that. I remember when you know I've been playing with these concepts uh, because I do your work on a daily basis, and um, it also agrees with the great masters of enlightenment through history. So I, I, I pursued it even when I didn't understand it at first. And I remember sitting there one day and thinking, how odd that this body had three children. And then I thought, wait a second. Every atom in my body is replaced every seven years, and that's true of that's all. all of us. That's also funny, fun, funny because her um, her son's name is Adam. <laughs> yeah, right. Every atom in my body is replaced, so he's now out of my body. But the thing is, 
There is not an atom of me sitting here that was anywhere near my consciousness seven years ago, let alone yeah. 20, 30 years ago. And I thought, this body, these atoms, did not have a baby. They weren't present when that those babies mm. were born. And where are the babies? Yeah. They were seven pounds. And now they walk around and play the piano and stuff. Yeah. Like, where's the baby? It's gone. Yeah. And I realized, oh my God, nothing real could disappear that entirely. I cannot... I can find pictures of the babies. I can find memories of the babies, but the babies are gone. Mm. Boom! The moment, the moment something's passed, it is irretrievable, and nothing real could vanish that completely. And what is left? If you question your beliefs, what is left are I? I have three children, and what's left I can see, feel, even smell. You know what it was to hold. Mm any one of these three children of mine and it's so so beautiful and in my mind's eye i get to watch them grow up now mm -hmm, they're going to mm -hmm. kindergarten and now they're going to high school and etc now they're their mothers and fathers and and so i have them there in me and then when one of them calls me or comes to my home and says hi mom it's just Oh, I've got it. And and but this is this is my altogether it's my perceived yeah. child. Yeah. And so I'm always so grateful to see that child absent of resentments or absent of any misunderstanding. So mm -hmm. I'm really connected. So there's no past. So it's not as simple as just hearing like um like my experience or your experience or a lofty experience. It's about noticing what you're thinking and believing and ending the war within yourself. And once yeah. that's done, the war ends in your life with other people. You have a, a, a deeper understanding. So again, I hope it's been transmitted through yeah. through a mind at home. Yeah, and, and what what we are what we really are in continuity, if anything is I thought, okay, I am the wisp of consciousness of knowing around which these atoms seem to accrue, and they keep going and creating an yeah, apparent yeah. body. Mm -hmm. And that's why the end of suffering in this apparent world, yes. you're here with us playing in the apparent world yes. to end what appears to be yes. suffering to us. Which we're all doing. It's a matter of being awake to it. Yeah. So, which is... Um, so much fun as 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 you can see out there uh, just to just to talk in this in in this new paradigm on um, this this new world this this uh, this friendly universe where where there's a solution for every problem and they're not separate it's yeah. it's it's they live in the same place and they're seen instantly yeah in the real world the mm -hmm. apparent the world solutions. has no problem Mm -hmm. So then you say, and this uh, people, I've had people say, how dare she? How very dare you? But I don't do this. I don't try to end suffering because I believe that anyone is actually suffering. This is what you yeah. say. And people are like, oh, yeah. I have suffered untold agonies. That so can did you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so Apparently. Yeah, so did I. And, and it's, it, this could sound very cold yeah. and uncaring and detached. But in in actuality, it's the extreme opposite. It's yeah. connected, and I'm left. You know, if if I if you're suffering, and I imagine what that feels like, then I suffer. But if I'm awake to, when you suffer, I can't feel your pain. That's I feel what I'm imagining your pain to be. So that's not your pain, that's my pain. Mm. So once I'm awake to that and you're in pain, I'm not in pain. I'm awake to the difference, you know, who, who hurts and who doesn't. And so I'm freed up to be of service. I am freed up from everything to just handing you, you know, if, if you need a tissue, I'm available for that. If you need 911, I'm available for that. If you need to be held, I'm available for that. It, it, a drink of water, I'm available for that. I am 100% available to be with, with those people in my lives who need someone not to suffer when they suffer, but just to understand and yeah. to listen and that is that is 
that's like the greatest gift we can give is yeah. to anticipate another person's need and to stay connected in the deepest, most emotional way yeah. mm -hmm. at the same time. So there's nothing cold about that. There's something selfless about it. But if someone is in pain and I imagine what they're feeling, it's like now we have two hurt people. <laughs> oh my gosh. And, and it becomes about me when you need the help and I'm suffering, but, um, but one of one of us are suffering legitimately, yeah. and it wasn't me. Yeah, well, my favorite uh, quote from the Persian poet Hafiz from the 13th century is really simple little snippet, and it goes, "Troubled, then stay with me, for I am not." Mm. And let me tell mm. you, my experience of you, you know, and I've read this stuff. You know, I don't really suffer, and nobody's really suffering. And, and yet when we were getting to know each other and you asked me a question about something that had been painful in my life and I was fine. I'd done the work on it. I was yeah. happy as a clam. And as you questioned me and I described to you what happened to me, you were there in complete calm with tears streaming down your face yeah. without any hesitation, any desire to separate from what I had felt and what I still carried. Yeah. And yet you were completely untroubled by it. You absolutely understood it, I felt. And you absolutely knew I was okay. Wow, that is something that just pulls us out of our suffering to be with someone whose mind is at home with itself. It's okay, amazing. You know, compassion is very different from feeling another person's pain yeah. in, in the way that, that we're describing it now. Yeah. Compassion that's, you know, that's, you know, you know what, it, what we're pointing to here is a connection that runs so so deep because it, it I say it, it comes out of an understanding mm -hmm. and what pain really is like and you know it's it's it sounds odd but that's not something that I can forget because it gave me life today yeah and, and that's why you finished this I don't do it because I believe that anyone is actually suffering. I do it because I'm serving myself. Because you are the suffering yeah. person, even though you know the suffering that at, at the core, they're completely okay. You know, and, and I can see that they're, they're okay. And I in, in, invite you all to to just become aware for a few moments of, of um, other than what you're thinking and believing, other than your state of mind, are you okay in this moment? And I love that you all have that. And and just to contemplate that, other than what you're thinking and believing, if you look back at the worst moments of your life and you just meditate on that and witness, other than what you're thinking and believing, are you okay? And then to honor, to honor what you see there. And this is the account of someone who's done that to the point where no suffering can penetrate or be believable anymore and it gives us a touchstone so read it a mind at home with itself mm -hmm. thanks for joining us bye-bye mm -hmm. bye-bye